As a chronic patient, the most likely outcome is disappointment. The most likely outcome is deterioration. The most likely outcome eventually is death. And so um, the, the, the challenge then is where does the patient get their resilience? Well, it is from, from their relationships of love that they have with their family, with their loved ones. And I also assume that it is also with their clinician. And so for instance, when that in interactions are transactional and there is a disappointment, one common behavior of the patient is to do doctor shopping and go and find some other clinician. Well, how distressing is, is it to not only lose whatever you know, gamble you just made on a particular treatment, but also lose a relationship that led to that treatment and have to reconnect and in that situation of you know defeat or disappointment have to reconnect with someone who you have to explain your whole story again and so uh, rather it will be like when my kids grew up and uh, and you know my hope is that they come home and that home will be a place of infinite love infinite um, understanding uh, forgiveness and the place where they could recover reconfigure re can, you know, re-engage and try again. Um, and I, I see that uh, in the best of the relationships that I have, it's not everyone, but in the best of relationships we have, it, that sort of relationship emerge and emerges first in casual language before it's fully experienced. So you start hearing patients say, oh, I love my doctor. They don't really love their doctor, but they sort of love their doctor. And you hear clinicians talking about, oh, I'm having Mrs. Jones. Is kind of, oh, I love Mrs. Jones. I'll see Mrs. And, and again, it, it comes on first in casual language like that. But then when Mrs. Jones has a disappointment, is your disappointment. Mm -hmm. And you often find yourself having discussions where you are disclosing some of your stuff. You are making yourself vulnerable because otherwise it feels very asymmetric and and so you 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 you're throwing lines at each other you bring in the boats closer together you are allowing each other to board each other's boat um, that is a position of vulnerability that many professionals do not allow themselves to have and some people recommend against um, uh, there's a dimension of human experience that they're missing if they are keeping those boats separate and um, and sometimes you need the separation to make difficult decisions and to have the emotional distance uh, to do so. Uh, but I think that that is overplayed. I think that the, um, the, the, the ability to be in it together with your patient, um, even though you're not suffering personal uh, negative consequences of the bad decisions or the bad luck that good decisions that lead to, um, is, is a minimum of solidarity uh, that you can have with those who are suffering around you. And it's a, it's a place from which you can draw a tremendous amount of meaning, tremendous amount of energy. 